The U.S. has some of the most highly regarded and sophisticated education programs in the world. Believe it or not, many of these schools focus on single-sex education. My own story starts with a little school in the heart of Raleigh, North Carolina. I was in a co-ed private high school in ninth grade when my parents were less than pleased with my geometry grades. You have always been so strong in math. What happened in this class? My mom asked. The boys call me question girl because I asked too many questions. I replied in tears. I had stopped asking questions, my main technique for engaging in the classroom, because the boys had started teasing me. My mom, an executive who has experienced firsthand the major gender diversity gap in the technology industry, has always taught me that I could be anything I wanted to be when I grow up. Not surprisingly, she demanded that I switch schools because, as she stated, there is no way I'm going to let this happen to my daughter. At first, I was less than thrilled because I had heard the rumors about what people think of all girls' schools. But despite my reluctance to move schools, I transferred to St. Mary's at the beginning of my sophomore year as a day student, later becoming a full-time boarder. After switching, I soon realized that other girls had had similar experiences to mine. Research shows that after single-sex education programs, girls walk out more confident and ready for the world. It also builds a sense of community and home, builds an incredible network, and teaches girls not to hesitate when following their dreams. St. Mary's turned out to be one of the best decisions me and my family ever made. Looking back upon my time in high school, they were easily some of the best years of my life, which is more than most high schoolers can say for themselves. All girls boarding schools like St. Mary's do a couple specific things to create such a good experience. The campus feels like a family household, faculty emphasize the importance of feminism and leadership in all aspects of life, administrators provide a truly authentic environment to learn and grow, and the community runs on century-old traditions that add to the school's rich history. Both inside and outside of the classroom, teachers act like friends. I was never afraid to walk into an office for any reason. In fact, I sat with many of my teachers for dinner every night. Many of my favorite high school memories all take place on campus with teachers and students interacting together. When I think about teachers and students interacting together, I remember one night in particular. With one month to go before graduation, we gathered in the lounge to check in for the night. Someone had a craving for Sonic slushies, and the next thing we knew, our favorite teacher was doing a midnight run to pick up slushies for the entire dorm. In our pajamas, we waited for her to return from this noble mission until 1 o'clock in the morning. I remember chatting for what seemed like hours with exhausted but deliriously happy classmates. I don't remember taking even one sip of that slushie, but I'll never forget how happy I was to be surrounded by and connected to these girls, feeling like a part of a very special group one that I would even call family. According to a research study about family functioning, family is perhaps the most influential system in an individual's life in which various behaviors are learned. And this couldn't be more true for teenage girls growing up in a dorm. It is important for girls on campus to have events that allow them to be themselves the way they would be at home. St. Mary's did a great job of providing this fun outlet for all girls at school. My favorite event was our annual grade level dance off. Each class would choreograph a dance and make costumes and then come to the auditorium late on a Thursday night to perform in front of a panel of judges composed of several teachers. After each dance, similar to dance shows on TV, each teacher would stand up and give their thoughts and grade the performance. At the end, they would hold a meeting to select the grade to win the overall prize. It was times like these that my friends and I felt we could really open up and forget about societal norms. Although it didn't feel like it, this was a learning opportunity in a very unique styled classroom. When I think back to high school, my first reaction is to smile broadly because my all-girls experience had so many benefits. But being part of an all-girls environment isn't always easy. In fact, at first, I didn't even want to attend an all-girls school, but my mom insisted after my question girl incident. I ended up loving it so much that I moved on to campus, but the onboarding for new students at St. Mary's was brutal. I remember some tense and uncomfortable social interactions where I felt like a complete outsider. One Friday night, I decided to attend Gloga, or Glow Stick Yoga. I was welcomed by a boarding school student who asked, what are you doing here? It isn't mandatory for day students. It was as if she had put me in a social box with no escape. While this type of scenario can happen at any high school, it was particularly intense in a tiny all-girls environment. Over time, I developed the skill to respond to such situations, and as a result, I have become more socially resilient. 
The trade-off between the social struggle of being a new girl versus the access to a safe learning zone was well worth it. A fellow graduate and classmate of mine, Darden Grubb, told me that at school she felt as though there was less competition and no one worried about physical appearance. She said she could just be herself and focus most of her energy on doing well in school. Both Darden and I were in the same AP Calculus class with Sarah Little, department chair and math instructor at St. Mary's. After my conversation with Darden, I asked Little to give her opinion of teaching at an all-girls school. Similar to my conversation with Darden, she said, I have taught in both public co-ed and private all-girls schools. In all-girls schools, students seem to have more willingness to take risks in the classroom and rise up to higher standards without being afraid of what their peers think. These experiences don't only hold true within St. Mary's School. Emily Keown explains how in an all-girls leadership project, the girls felt supported by their peers, loved by the community, and connected to the sisterhood of a larger group. I know I definitely felt this way during my time at St. Mary's. Overall, I am very grateful to have had the opportunity to be part of such an amazing in-group. This all-girls education is something special that I will take with me for the rest of my life. Post-graduation, I already see myself making references to my time at St. Mary's, and every time I tell a story, it reminds me of how much I love the school. I, too, walked into the experience with false assumptions, and I walked out changed for the better. Stereotypes may still exist, but I am satisfied that at the very least, I know the reality behind what happens in an all-girls boarding school. Ultimately, all-girls boarding schools provide a safe zone for young women to develop strong self-esteem, a feeling of independence, and the confidence to lead and learn without hesitation.